Hi, I'm Robert. This is my girl Reagan. She's a sled dog here at Timaneke in Willow, Alaska. And we have a very special program for you today. We're going to talk about leadership using a mushing team. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to our presentation today. We will be talking about leadership lessons using a sled dog team. My name is Robert Forto and I'm a dog musher living in the wilds of Alaska with a team of 40 sled dogs. I am joined today by my girl Reagan, who is a sled dog here at Team Aneke. She is nine years old and was my first sled dog when I arrived in Alaska. Today we will be learning lessons through the acronym for the word MUSH. The M in mushing is mission. The U is for unity. The S is for servitude. And since this is a program geared towards Christian leaders, the H is for holiness. After our lecture, we will be doing some team building exercises and then a Q&A and spending some time with Reagan and maybe even a short ride in the sled. Our first lesson we're going to teach is mission. A team, whether in business, in a church, or at a school, is like a dog musher with an eight dog team. Each dog is paired with another in tandem. The musher hooks up his harness team and pulls the snow hook and yells hike. The team whisks through the forest like a sleek ship at sea. The lead dogs take a right turn in the trail without hesitation. The team dogs follow. The heavy sled is going to take some extra effort to change course, but the wheel dogs instinctually throw themselves to the right on the trail. This is a marvelous team. Almost every dog knows his job, and they have been doing it well for years, especially the leader. Discipleship. The parable of a sled dog team is an important lesson in discipleship. Aged leaders are priceless as trainers for young sled dogs. They are calmer and slower than the lead dog in his prime. They have the patience and perseverance to teach a young pup how to lead. The aged sled dog removes all value from himself, but is full of wisdom and insight. This is easily translated into leadership through mentoring and discipleship. Single-mindedness. When you're looking for a good lead dog or even a good team dog, you should look for single-mindedness. The modern sled dog as we know it today can be traced back to dogs from 2,000 years ago. They are bred for the purpose they live for today. You can see this in a three-month-old pup when you put on a training harness. Just like a duckling that thinks nothing about sliding into the water, hooking up a sled dog to a bigger team triggers 2,000 years of mental conditioning. In business, those who have impacted the world and known as masters of an art or science, are those that have been become obsessed with one thing. These are the ones that have found their mission and gave it their all. Born to run. Sled dogs are born to run. Their mission in life is to do what they love to do more than anything in the world. Don't strive to look the part. Strive to be the man or woman that you have been called to be. Delegation and Responsibility A good leader can delegate a duty, but cannot delegate responsibility. Hear me, leaders. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Your team will not do what you expect. They will do what you inspect. Leadership is about accepting responsibility for your team. Set your team up for success. The next lesson we are going to teach is Unity. A team that can keep on going. When I first arrived in Alaska and signed up for my first race, I was told there were some hills. It was the Tustamina 200, and those hills were mountains. In training, I was used to getting off the sled and running up the hills to give the dogs a break. I did this so often that when we got to the race and the hills were so long and steep, I couldn't run up them off the sled. The team quickly learned 
that if the sled got too heavy, they would stop and look back. It took us 12 hours to run 50 miles. Let's just say that was the toughest race of my life. The dogs learned, hey, he will get off and run with us just when you need him the most. By getting off to run up the hills, it set the team up to fail. In the business world, adopt the work ethic in your team that you may be willing to assist them in the daily chores, but don't set them up to fail. Let them get accustomed to pulling their own weight of the daily tasks so that when the going gets tough, you can step in and fill up the gaps. Unless you are the lead dog. There is an old saying in mushing, unless you're the lead dog, the view never changes. The idea is that the lead dog has a full reign of vision while the team dogs only see the tail of the dog in front of them. This is a great example of how most people see the world in terms of teamwork. Everyone spends their life trying to climb further up the ladder of success rather than finding their place in the team. Breaking Trail In the mushing world, there is a saying, You aren't a musher until you have broken trail. Or, you don't have a real dog team unless... Much of this is chest-beating rhetoric. Breaking trail is when you have a foot or more of snow in front of you with no clear path. I can remember on occasion when I took a wrong turn and soon I was up to my armpits in snow and it took me almost an hour to get my team turned around. It was tough work. In the business world, you really aren't a team truly united until you have broken trail. The path of least resistance will make your team as crooked as a river. If you are united, you can blaze a trail to the finish line. The next lesson is about servanthood. To whom much is given, much is required. Other than the view, being a lead dog is not all it's cracked up to be. The musher expects you to outperform every other dog in the team. Run longer, sleep less, maintain order in the team, focus on the trail, and have your ears focused on the next command. Typically, when a sled dog team is slacking off, it is the leader that gets yelled at. You're probably thinking that the lowly team position you are currently holding is sounding more appealing. If so, good. But if you're called out of the team to become a good leader, be in good cheer. Be the best servant leader you could possibly be. The Alpha Myth. If you've ever seen a movie about mushing or read books like Call of the Wild, you will often see that the lead dog is the alpha dog of the pack, the most dominant and largest dog that has fought his way to the top. This could not be the furthest from the truth. In my team, I have a little dog named Shock. She's about 45 pounds and is all heart. She will lead the team through a blinding snowstorm or across glare ice. She works hard and never quits. It is my experience that alpha dogs rarely make good leaders because they are too headstrong to be teachable. Alphas are too consumed by their own agenda, which is maintaining their top position, and they cannot handle being chased by the other dogs in the pack. More often than not, the leader of the team was not naturally alpha. He or she is a happy dog that is eager to please the musher. It often conveys humility that makes others feel unthreatened. Leaders in the rough. There are things I look for in a potential lead dog. I want him or her to be passionate about me, or in the case of business, about the work, not himself. He or she must show passion before there is any glory in it for him. Then I will know he will do his best in the spotlight. Never give up. The number one rule in mushing is never to let go of the sled. The dogs will not stop and wait for you. They will not come back to your call. They have been waiting since their last run to run again. Rule number two in mushing, don't neglect rule number one. Life is the same way. It is a constant state of movement. It will not stop and wait for you. Life does not come back when you call it. Don't let go and never give up. The next lesson is about holiness. Let me let you in on a little secret. A dog musher cannot handle more than three or four dogs at a time. It's true. 
Three or four dogs is as much as a man can overpower when they're out of control. There is no way for a man to stop a dog team of six dogs that do not want to stop. Many people are frightened by the sheer power of a dog team the first time they're on a sled and never want to go again. I have mushed as many as 18 dogs at once, but that is on a very rare occasion. The key is to start small. When dogs are very young, I train them in such a way to have complete control at all times. The first time they're in a team, it is with a couple of older dogs that have learned to accept my commands. I teach the young dogs to take it easy on my direction. Do you want your business organization to grow? Start small. It's best that things don't get out of control. In thinking of this from a Christian perspective, when you show your good at stewardship, Of what he has entrusted in you, he will entrust you more. It's all about me. This program was designed to be taught from a Christian perspective for a project in a master's degree level class in recreation program design. With that in mind and bringing everything together, a leader is one that has been finally attuned to the voice of a musher. This is why I look for a dog that is passionate about me. I don't look for dogs that are overly affectionate but look for a dog that is locked into my face and my movement throughout the kennel. A dog that senses my mood. This is the premise for building a leader attuned to the master's voice. As a Christian, desiring to make an impact in work, you must develop an ear for the voice of God. Even keener must be the ear that hears the voice of God while meditating on his word in the wilderness and speaks to you through the natural works of his hand. We will now transition over to the dog sled and work on some team building exercises. First, we will talk about the positions in the team. In the back of the team, we have the wheel dogs. These dogs are like the offensive linemen in football. They are big, strong dogs that are pulling the weight of the heavy sled. Next are the team dogs. These dogs make up the power of the team. In some mushing teams, you may have two team dogs and others you may have more. Ahead of the team dogs are the swing dogs. These dogs are ran right behind the leaders and they help swing the team in one direction or another by taking the cues from the leaders. The leaders are at the front of the team and are taking the direction from the musher who is behind the sled. It is their job to make sure the team stays on course. Let's talk a little bit about teamwork in a sled dog team. When leading a new team, take time to get to know each of the players personally, professionally, and before everyone starts running. If possible, watch leaders who have traveled the path before. When teaming your dogs together or people, considering personality is key. Mentors stretch their protégés, taking them out of their comfort zone when they believe they are ready. Not every dog in your team will be a lead dog. The very best teams have players that can operate in other positions. The lead can be a burdensome place to be. Swing dogs can be rotated with lead dogs. Succession is critical to the overall mission. Knowing the positions that my people naturally play and allowing them to run in that position increases their satisfaction and lead to better team performance. Let's open up the floor to questions. Are there any questions? I have a question. Yes. Are mentors important and critical to success? Yes. Pairing the right learner to the right mentor is an important step to the successful growth of the team. As mentioned earlier, Allowing a young pup to learn from an older dog 
by running beside him in the team is a great example of mentorship in mushing. That's awesome. Thanks.